Today we're with Professor Marcelo Gleiser, uh, Appleton Professor of Natural Philosophy at Dartmouth College, who's gracious enough to offer us this wonderful interview with the Foundation of Unity. So, Professor Gleiser, thank you very much. You recently published, uh, you've published many books and recently published uh, The Tear at the Edge of Creation, and that's a wonderful book that I just finished. So, um, thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. Marcella, do you have any personal experience with unity? Yes, um, I think I do. Um, mostly, um, I love nature. And to me, to be one is to be one with nature. And I basically go and search for that experience all the time. So, I think this all started when I was younger, when I was about 15 years old. My brother took me to an island close to Rio. Beautiful, beautiful place, tropical island. And he said, okay, you sit on this rock here and you look at the ocean and you think about life. And I remember that I did that and suddenly I started to look at the place and I realized that I was not different from the place, that I was the rock, I was the ocean, I was the air, I was the trees. And there was this very strong sense of integration into nature. And from then on, I understood that we are part of the universe, and the universe is part of us. And for me, this is a very deep expression of unity. Beautiful. And from a professional perspective, how, does you, how do you think about unity? So I, I would say that um, after an experience like that, um, my career path, my whole life, was the search for this unity. So being a scientist, in a sense, you know, people have this image that scientists are those cold, calculating people that only care about numbers and data, and that's a completely wrong idea. You know, scientists are first and foremost in love with nature, and that's exactly why they dedicate their lives to understanding the mysteries of the natural world. So I would say that my career path is my search for unity, is my search for understanding in a deeper and deeper way the universe and the way we fit into this universe so that we have this sense of unity you know, through my work and through my life. Could I briefly ask a follow-up question? How has that been going in that circle? <laughs> in, was, in just a brief... Yeah, well, um, I am very much fascinated with questions of origins. So if you want to summarize, you know, what does he do? Well, I look at the origin of the universe. Where and how did the universe come to be? I look at the origin of matter. How come there is matter in the universe? Where did it come from? Was it an accident? Is there some fundamental law of nature that, ex that can explain the origin of, of the material world? And finally, I'm also interested in the origin of life. So I've been spending a long time, uh, lately in the last few years, trying to understand how come a bunch of inanimate atoms, how come they got together and they became a living thing. And how did that start? How do you do this jump from non-living to living? Is it chemistry? And how does this chemistry self-organize to actually create this? So I would say that, uh, in a sense, the search for unity, or to explain it better, the search for how do you fit in the universe is really my, my, my search for understanding the origins of things. So what's your vision about unity? Are you pessimistic, you are optimistic, you have some special, completely new version of unity? I am an eternal optimist. I, uh, in fact, in my last book I talk about this, and uh, even though I, 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 I mentioned that right now um, what we see is that the world really needs our help, that uh, we've been here, you know, and human beings are extremely parasitic. Uh, in the sense that we feed from the earth and from what it has to offer and we give very little in return and you just can't have this one-way traffic forever you know you have to kind of learn to take care of your home as well and so the way I see all this coming in together is that by studying the origin of the universe the origin of matter and the origin of life especially the life on earth I realize, not just me, but this whole scientific community uh, that studies what we call astrobiology, the study of life in the universe, that life is not a very widespread 
event in the universe. It may be there, there may be even intelligent life somewhere in the galaxy, but we are here pretty much alone in a very special planet, a real oasis of life in a universe, in a cosmos that is very hostile to anything living, you get off the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is this thin little skin, yeah. and you're done. There is nothing friendly about the universe out there. It's a very nasty place. And so here we are in this cocoon that takes care of us, right? And, uh, and, and to me, the realization that we are here and that we depend of the Earth should create a sense of unity with us, with nature, and with each other. Because only as we grow as a species into a higher level of moral and spiritual maturity, because right now I think we're pretty late, we're, we're still late, we still have a lot to grow, only then I think we're actually going to be able to do the jump into understanding the importance that it is to be alive, to have life in this lonely planet in the cosmos. So to me that's where I see unity coming along, but I do see that this sense, this conscience, if you want, is emerging. And more people are aware of that. And I like that. You know, and I see that happening more and more. And so I would say that in the next 30 years or so, and I'm making a small prediction here, and I hope to be alive to see it, we are going to really experience a complete change of the relationship between the humans and the planet. Wonderful. So, what do you think what we can t contribute actually for the unity? What we, each of us can do so we can connect with each other, we can do something for the youth, so tell us your right. ideas. Right, so I think that that's a, that's a good, very good question because people say, oh, we have all these wonderful ideas and so what? Right? And I think each person has a different role. And I love that slogan that people use, you know, you know, think globally but act locally. And I think that each person can make a difference, you know, and that difference is very subjective. So in my case, obviously you have to start by living a clean life in terms of ecologically, you know, so as much as you can do, right? And uh, so you live close to nature, you don't spend more and more than you should, etc. you know, resources. But, so that goes without saying. I think that uh, every family should be educating their children in that sense, because it is their world. It is the future of the world really is in their hands. You know, it's their world, and we are leaving a very bad world for them. It should be better. We can do better. So in my case, since I'm interested in science and in public understanding of science and in science education, I think that my contribution is to tell people this message that I just told you about this sense of connection between us and our world and the universe as a whole. How to do that? Well, by educating people as much as possible. So I do that through my books, I do that through my television programs, etc., public lectures, and I'm hoping that in the future I'm going to develop a educational program in Brazil, which is where I grew up, and so I feel like I should go there to do that, in order to educate the poor people, especially the children of the slums in Brazil, about the universe, about what is a star and our planet and why life is so important, because I think that nothing is more valuable than education and the ability to think for yourself. To me, that's only a person that is able to think for themselves is actually a free person. And so if you give that to people, you're actually giving them freedom. And through that, you may actually make the world a better place. Who else would you like to hear speak on unity and learn more about their ideas? I think you should invite the Brazilian, uh, Brazilian uh, artist Vic Muniz, who is in New York. I think he will have wonderful things to say. He's one person I think will be very good. Um, you may also want to speak to a person called Rebecca Goldstein, who is a philosopher and a writer from Harvard, who is also a very nice person, has a very interesting take in science and religion and the relationship between the two. So these are two good ones. Thank you so much, Marcelo. It was wonderful uh, to interview you. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Oh, my pleasure.